go. You know, there was a guy came home one day from work, and when he walked up the sidewalk, there was uh, toys everywhere, and he went inside, and the sink was full of dirty dishes. Kids were running around with a droopy, uh, a dirty uh, a diapers. Uh, the house was just a wreck. He went into the bedroom. His wife was in bed. Uh, nothing made, and he said, what are you doing? What's the matter with you? She said, you know all those things that you would come home and say, what did you do today? Well, today I didn't do it. <laughs> and that's the way with Bill and the kitchen. All, you know, all the things that we take for granted, if one day they decided we're not going to do them, you'll miss them. You don't miss the water till the world, the world go, go dry. And this week of Thanksgiving, why don't we thank uh, people that you might not uh, normally do or you might not, you know, uh, 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 notice? Why don't you say, Lord, help me to find somebody that uh, uh, that I just maybe have taken for, you know, granted. Maybe if they didn't do what they've always done, I would really miss it. But I've got so used to it. Maybe, maybe we could just do, uh, just do that too. This, this week and thank all the people for what that they, you know, do. Um, when uh, Chuck mentioned the blue card in your thing, I hate to say every th thought I get is from God, but if it's not a God thought, I think it's a good thought. You know what came to my mind? Is to ask you to take out that card and see that top line? You put a name in there. A name that you would like to see sign that card. You just go ahead and put his name in. And then when he gets here, you just hand him that card and say, I already got your name on it. <laughs> and if you pray for that person every day, take that card and you pray for that person. Sooner or later, that prayer will get down into your feet. And you'll go invite that person. Just a thought. If just one of them, if every one of them would just put one name on it, do you think by this time next year you could invite and talk and persuade and pray? And if the custard stand ever opened, offer to buy them a, 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 an ice cream after church, do you think you could get one person to come? Just one. Got 12 months. Do you think there's one person in Sepsis or out here at the lake? That's one person that you could invite enough time and pray for and get them here. Just one. I don't know. Uh, you take it. And, you know, uh, you, are, you are a sheep. You can't drive sheep. You can lead them. But you can't drive them. You drive cows. And he didn't call you cows. He called you sheep. So I'm not here to make you. I'm just here to ask you to think about it. And you put that name in there. And you put this card someplace where you see it. You put it, Barbara will put it on the TV. I will put it on the icebox. <laughs> <laughs> and where you would see it every day and pray for that person. Okay. Here we go. Let's see. Now don't forget to pray for us on Tuesday, on Tuesday night, okay? Please do that. Uh, I don't want to embarrass you or dishonor God. Sometimes, as you probably have found out, I can say things that's better not <laughs> recorded. <laughs> and I don't want the people in town to say, well, they picked a goofy one this time out there on the, on the, on the lake. They ought to throw him in there. Uh, they ought to throw him into the lake and try, uh, 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 try again. Uh, the church that I pastored for 30 years, in the last, I think, three or four years, they voted on the third guy last Sunday night. So this is his first Sunday. So I give the thing, and they had the old guy for 30 years, and they got three new guys in three years. So maybe they were better off with the old guy. I don't know on that. Oh, 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 oh that doesn't go out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the uh, the uh, problem you got, how you know you got it, and the cure for it, okay?
the problem you got, how you know you got it, and the cure for it. Let's start. Deuteronomy. Moses knew he was not going to get to go into the promised land. And they were just on the verge of going in. And Deuteronomy means the renaming, the re-preaching. Deuteronomy is actually one long uh, a sermon or two short ones. And it's Moses giving his last speech, his last instructions uh, uh, to them, okay? So it a, was a big deal, not only for the people as they going into the promised land, but Moses knew this was my last shot. This is my last chance. So I think the things that the old man said was not only from God's spirit, but was from his heart. And it would behoove us to, I think, listen this morning as what he has to say as the people getting ready to go in. Take care lest you forget. 24 times in this sermon, in this book, Moses tell the people to remember, to remember. And I think he knew our nature is when the crisis is over, we tend to forget. In a time of a national emergency, churches are filled. But after the, it's over, the churches are vacant again. And it doesn't take us long. Take care, lest you forget the Lord your God. See? By not keeping his commandments. How do you know you love him? You obey him. How do you know he's really your Lord, God? Paul says, my aim is to please him. That's how, that's how you can tell you. It's not real hard. And his rules and his statute, which I've commanded you to die. Verse 12. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built good houses, live in them. And when your hearts and your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. Then, 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 you think it would be the time you would be most thankful, wouldn't it? You would think after everything is going well and the crops turned out good and you had a bumper crop and your houses are, 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 uh, uh, are paid for, and you, you would think that would be the time that it would be easy to remember. But then your heart be lifted up, pride, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of, of slavery, who led you through the great and terrifying wilderness with his fiery serpents and scorpions and thirsty ground, well, there was no water who brought you water out of a plenty of rock, who made a way when there was no way. Do you remember when there was no way and the way maker came out and he made a way? And he said, when you get over there, you'll forget all those times when it seemed like there was no way possible and he made a way. He, he, he made a way. Who fed you in the wilderness with manna that your father did not know, that he might humble you and test you to do you good in the end. Beware that you say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand had gotten me this well. You shall remember, you shall remember, you shall remember Thursday, you shall remember Friday, you shall remember Saturday, you shall remember November, December, January, February, you shall remember the Lord your God. For it is he who gives you the power to give wealth that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your father as it is this day. Go back to verse 14. He said, I want you to remember that he brought you out of Egypt. 
you remember what it was like before you were saved? Do you remember what Egypt felt like? Do you remember what it was like? He said, he brought you out of the land of Egypt. Go to that uh, Numbers, I think chapter 11, verse 4, or 4, chapter 11. Getting old isn't for, isn't for uh, 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 sissies. You young guys don't get old, and I don't like it. <laughs> but the alternative isn't so hot either. Numbers, I, I think, uh, did I give a, a numbers down there? Well, go to it. See if you can see if you can find it. Well, that's a good question. Let's try eleven four. And I trust me on this one. Write it down somewhere in Numbers. The little man said. <laughs> the Bible says, and the rabble among them. They were a mixed multitude. See, the first thing that they did, they mixed up with the world. See, it's not the church in the world is not the problem. It's the world we brought into the church that's the problem. And it, King James says it's a mixed multitude. They had inner America. They had got, they brought in the world, okay? And they had a strong craving. King James said they lusted. And the people of Israel wept and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. Go down to verse 5. And they said, uh, they, We remember the fish we ate in Egypt, the cucumbers, the melon, the onion, and the garlic. I believe there were some Italian Jews in here. <laughs> now, if the guy in back of you had just eaten a lot of garlic, you probably walked a whole lot faster. Maybe it wouldn't have taken them 40 years to get there. But after they got out of Egypt, it didn't take them long to mix in with the world, and they had the things of the world, and they looked back and remembered Egypt, and they remembered all the good stuff. They went back and they said, Boy, we was uh, in bondage, and we were uh, 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 slaves, but the food was free. And we think our food is free. They were slaves. They were in bondage. They worked. They made bricks. They had to make their own straw. And they sweated all day. But they had free food at the end. No, it wasn't free. It was an entitlement program, but it wasn't free. They were in bondage. How about the getting beat? How about the sweat? How about getting up in the morning before sunrise and carrying bricks and making bricks and building a pyramid? How come they couldn't remember that? All they remembered about Egypt was the good. We've come too far to turn back now, kids. There's nothing to go back to. Egypt is not where you want to go back to. And the devil will tell you and remember the good parts. And by the way, to tell these young people sin is not a pleasure is a lie. Sin is fun. The Bible says it is. For a season. And the harvest is bad. And the consequence is bad. But to tell those kids they're not having fun, they'll know you're lying. You better tell them it won't last. Sin will take you farther than you want to go. You'll stay longer than you wanted to stay. And you'll pay a whole lot more than you ever intended to pay. And when he gets done with you, he'll kick you to the curb. Amen. But be honest with them. You see this picture of the convertible and the girls in the bikini and the barbecue and the steaks that thick and the Budweiser? You, what the trouble is, right down the road they ought to put another billboard 
with that red convertible wrapped around a telephone pole and some mommy and daddy picking up the corpse of the 18-year-old kid. Now that first billboard's true. They just don't paint the second billboard and the consequence of sin. Well, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> they remembered. He said, don't forget where he brought you from. And don't forget where you could have been. It was a Sunday morning and everybody was dignified. You won't really believe there was a time people wore suits to church. But I know. I went from a suit to a, just a shirt with a tie and then no coat. And then I went to a dress shirt without a tie. And now I'm in old man polos. <laughs> That's what happened over 50 years of preaching. I don't know what's next. I, 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 I hope they don't want me to take it off. I mean, I don't know what's next. But I mean, I have come a long way. And when it was all in those suits and ties, Kathy was singing that old song. My desire is to serve him. There's a part of it that says, if you know where he brought me from or where I might have been, then you know why I love him so. And about that time, Jim got up. And he ran a Jericho lap around the auditorium. And he came back over and grabbed his pew and sat there for a while. And she hit another note. If you knew where he brought me from, and well I might have been, then you know why I love him so. And he took off on another lap. I said, how am I ever going to get him to sit down? <laughs> because somebody else is going to follow him, and then we're going to have a Pentecost service in a Baptist church, and this will never go over. <laughs> I won't be able to tell the boys at the pool hall in the morning what happened. Are the preachers at the Dairy Queen will they brag about how many and how much? You know what I mean? Well, <clears throat> I was in a bind. After church, I went over. And I said, Jim, I know where he brought you from. The bondage. Remember what he said? He brought me out of the slavery. Jim, lost his kids, his wife, his family, <laughs> shooting up. Jim, in his 40s, looked like he was 90. Jim was in the pig pen, if there ever was. And one day, he was headed for death knowing that every day was worse than the day before. And one day Jesus came and picked Jim up out of the miry clay and put his feet on the rock to stay. And Jim was sitting there and he was listening to that woman and the words, if you knew where he brought me from, if you had known my Egypt, if you have lived one day in the slavery of drugs and alcohol. And if you know where I might have been, if you knew where I was headed, then you know why I love him so. And Paul said this earthen vessel cannot contain it. It was in order, it was proper. Now I told Jim, I said, now Jim, I'm glad you did it, and I know why you did it. But if I had got back the next Sunday and said, wasn't that wonderful, won't we be a great church when everybody acts like Jim? The next Sunday, everybody been running. And that wouldn't been God, that been flesh. But now you listen to me. That morning, it was God. Amen. And it was in order, and it was decent, and it was okay with heaven and with me. 
because I knew Jim didn't forget that it was God, not the deacons, not you. Remember what uh, David told, told Michael when he got dancing, bringing the ark. Remember what David said? David said, honey, you didn't make me king. God did. And your daddy didn't do this to me. And if you think dancing out here on the street is bad, you ain't seen anything yet, honey. That's a, a paraphrase, but it's in there. He said, you get over there and get prosperous and you'll forget Egypt and you'll forget the bondage and you'll get living the easy life. Don't ever forget, he said. Moses, that old man said, don't ever forget what Egypt was like and slavery and bondage and you don't want to go back there. There's nothing to go back there. Nothing to go back to. And he said, don't forget that my commandments. Go to uh, Deuteronomy. Now, let's get this. Go to Deuteronomy 6. Moses said, someday you kids are going to say. Uh, read it. Uh, 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 Deuteronomy uh, 6, 20. Give me just a minute. Now, listen to this. When your sons ask you in time to come, what is the meaning of these laws? Why do, why do we keep all these rules, Daddy? Why, why, why do we do all these things that God has said? Don't your kids sort of ask you that and think we're squirrels and not cool and not having fun? See, we forget that every law that God has is for your protection and your provision. Can you imagine what a world would be like if nobody stole? Who's that helping? God? The fact that you don't steal money from your neighbor, how's that making God? How's that changing his world? It doesn't. It changes your world, right? Can you imagine what it would be like if everybody was honest? Can you imagine what it would be like? And when they ask you, why, why do you, why do we keep all these rules? We forget. See, we teach, our kids think <coughs> it's so God doesn't want them to be happy or to have fun. And by the way, when they look at you, they probably got the right idea. You're a bunch of grouchy old people that don't know how to have fun. Why do I want to end up like you? Now, really, really, have you shown them that you can have fun without drinking? Have you shown them you can have fun with one woman the rest of your life? You've got to be kidding me. Have, do they have role models to go by? Look, those people live by the Bible and see how happy they are. No, we're as screwed up as anybody else. I, I mean, so don't blame them. Okay, you, you take a cruise and you're on this deck and everybody's dancing and everybody having fun, okay? Half of the ship has a rail around it, a fence. The other half doesn't have anything. Now, which half can you really be freer in? The half that you can book it and know it that if you bump against that fence, you're not going to fall. Or how about the half that doesn't have a fence or doesn't have anything and you always got to be watching falling off? Now, which one are you really freer on? The one with the boundary or the one without boundary? You can have more fun over here on this side, staying in the boundary. The fence is there to protect you, not to hurt you. And we have to understand every one of God's laws is for your protection and your provision, honey. That's why we do it. It's because it's for our ultimate good. And you have to, you know, trust God. We say we trust God, 
but we don't trust him in his rules about sex uh, and marriage. We, we, we make our own rules. We live it the way we think is going to make us happy. And has it? All the transsexual transmitted diseases, the abortions, the, um, all the mess, all the broken homes, all the miseries, all the... How's that worked out, worked out uh, 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 for us? So, it's on. And he says, in verse 21, Then you shall say to your son, We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and the Lord, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand. And the Lord showed signs and wonders, great and grievous, against Egypt and against Pharaoh, and all his household before our eyes. And he brought us out from there that he might bring us in. <laughs> he brought you out of Egypt to take you someplace. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He just didn't bring you out. He brought you in. You see? And, um, and so he said, and he brought us out from here that he might bring us give us the land that he swore to us by our father. God deliver us to take us out of Egypt, but into Canaan. And heaven is not Canaan. Heaven is not the promised land. The promised land is here, right here, living the abundant life that he wants us to have. And Moses says, don't forget that it was your Lord God that brought you out of Egypt and brought you out. And then he says, be careful that you don't think it's you. Die to pride. Watch pride. A winning football team. National championship. My grandson played this summer for a football league over in uh, England, and they were the national champs. Had never been scored against until the championship game. And he's on the big D. It was all because of Gavin Jordan that no other <coughs> team scored against this other thing. It was all him. And if you don't believe me, ask Barbara, and she'll be glad to tell you that her <laughs> grandson kept the whole England, the ever team, from getting one touchdown because of Gavin. He was the one. And so they come and they got the, got the rain and all that stuff. And I said, now, Gavin, you know it was gone. And you could tell he, 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 he wasn't going to say no. But he knew who got up at 4 o'clock to practice. He knew how hard he had worked from high school. I mean, he ate it and slept. He knows who put on that big uniform in August in order to be able to play in the snow in November. He knows who drunk the protein. He knows who pumped on. And what he wanted to say, now Gramps, I, I know what you're saying, but you know, I had something to do with that. It does wasn't well God. Gavin, who gave you lungs to breathe air? Who gave you health? Who gave you the talent? Who gave you the mental capacity? Who gave you muscles? Who made ligaments? Who gave your granny money <laughs> to buy shoes? Go to 1 Corinthians 4, 7, and then we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 4, 7. So write that down. That's easy. i got to hurry. 1 Corinthians 4-7. Did I have 714? I mean 4-7. 
First Corinthians, don't go into seven husbands, wife, and sex. That's not going to that chapter. Lord, Lord. Let's go to chapter first, chapter seven, verse four. He probably couldn't read. Well, we'll go back to First Corinthians in a minute. That's go here. This is this is good. For we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. The jars of clay is your, is your Bible. Now go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. He said, we have this treasure in this earthen body that is God's power, not ours. It's God's power, not ours. For who sees anything different in you? Why are you different? If anybody sees you're different, you can sing better, you can run better, you can preach better, you can play football better, you're good by, you can make the best uh, pumpkin cheesecake that I have seen. Who makes you different? What makes you feel good about yourself? Now we all got it. Y'all can't be, I'm a chick magnet, so I'm just gorgeous, I can't help it. You know what I mean? We all got it, okay? If you got it, I'm fine, you know? You, you got something that makes you different, that you're proud of, and that's not evil. What do you have that you didn't receive? Was you born tall? Was you born with the ability to sing? Paul says, because these Corinthians were getting puffed up. They were getting, we'll, we are special, you know. And the Jews, we are God's chosen people kind of thing. If then you received it as a gift, every good gift from above, if you received it as a gift, then why do you boast in it? Don't you love these people who get up at the quartet convention? God woke me up at 2 o'clock in the morning. And he took my hand, and I wrote this song. It comes straight from God. God gave me this song. But if you use it, I'll sue you. <laughs> it's not yours. It's God. Let me sue God. You understand what I mean? And Paul is saying, it's everything you got. Every talent, everything you got was given to you by a good daddy that knows how to give good gifts. Luke says, if you know how to give good gifts to your kids, how much more does your daddy know how to give good gifts to you? And in particular, the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the power that enables us to do everything. Don't forget. Don't forget. It's all God. Don't forget. So the problem is we will forget. Maybe we do need a day once a year as a big reminder. It's easy to forget. It's just easy to forget that it's all God's. Everything that we have, we move and have our being in Him. Now, how do you know if you got the problem? Because all of us know I'm talking to the person next. Let's go ahead and tell the person next to you, he's talking about you. <laughs> now, so far, are you paying attention? Now, nudge your wife and say, are you paying attention? Because oh, this is about, this is for you. You know what I mean? But how do you know if you got it. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And in the list of stuff that the Israelites did, the Bible says one thing in, in particular in 1 Corinthians 10, that they complained and murmur and complain. And that's how you know that you got the problem 
if you're a complainer, and you probably do need to ask your wife, am I a complainer? Because you don't think so. But we grumble as some of them did and was destroyed by the destroyer. Grumbling, complaining. We ask yourself this, do I complain because I have problems? Or do I have problems because I'm a complainer? The glass is always half empty. You know how you can tell if the glass is half empty or half full? If it's chocolate milk, it is half empty. If it's Petrol Bismol, it's half full. <laughs> but are you negative? Are you a complainer? See, gratitude is what makes what you have to be enough. Gratitude is the opposite. Are you a thankful person? You know how bad being unthankful is? In Romans chapter 1, we always read this when it shows the spiral of sin and you end up in sexual depravity, when you end up the most immoral society that we are looking at now, when you end up not knowing boys and girls and not knowing identity, when you end up in the gutter, see, where does it start? If you read Romans, the last verses in the book of Romans, they were being unthankful. You know what the beginning of the end is for a society or for a person? You know what the beginning of your end is? When you end up in the pig pen, immoral, you know what it started with according to the Bible? <clears throat> Being unthankful. Why? Being unthankful means that you don't understand it all is about God and coming from God. So the problem is forgetting that it is God who brought me out of Egypt and out of bondage. And it manifested in an attitude of negative and complaining and it's all about me and, and, and I'm this and, and I'm that. Now, what's the cure for this? What's the cure for that? Go to Psalms 100 quickly. This is the cure for it. You wanna change it or, uh, 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 around? This is the cure of it. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come into his presence with singing. Know the Lord. He is God. It is he who made us. And we are his. And we are his people. Hold, uh, hold that with us for a minute. He said, know God. Not about God, not information, but know Him, experience Him. He is God. He's the one that gave us the health. He's the one that gave me breath. He's the one that is everything. He's the one that loved me enough to come and to die for me. And if He didn't abandon me on the cross, if He didn't change His mind, if there ever was a time that Jesus would have changed his mind, it was right before they drove the nails into his hands. If he didn't change his mind on that day, why do you think he would change it today? If he died for you, how much more are we saved because he is alive for me? He who made us, created us, wanted us. Jesus said, if you call your brother a fool, you are in danger of hell far. Don't you think that's over the top? Now, really, now be honest with me. Don't you think Jesus went a little bit overboard when he said this? If you call brother out, even though he may have manifest, even though he's got evidence, but if you call him stupid, if you call him you're in danger of going to hell. Now, don't you think that's a little over the top? It wasn't murder. It wasn't 
stealing, wasn't adultery, wasn't just calling him an idiot. Why is that such a big deal with God? Because Rhonda, <laughs> he made you. You're the apple of his eye. You're the art that it hangs on his eyeball. And everybody knows it's not pretty and it's not art. But why does he put it on the refrigerator? Because his kid Rhonda made it. And it's special to him. Think on that. Get that down to my head, to your heart. And we are his. We are his people. We are the sheep. And he's the good shepherd. He takes care of us. He gets the cockerbur out of our wool. He puts the oil on our wounds. He leads me. He guides me. So now I can enter into his courts with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Sing. Be happy. God is a happy God that who wants happy people. Enter his courts with praise. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Give unto him all glory and all honor. Praise him. If you're happy, notify your face. The problem is we forget that it is God. We forget Egypt. We forget where he brought me from. We forget where I might have been. The symptom is we're negative, complaining, grumbler, dollars, miserable people because, and the answer is singing, rejoicing, praising, focusing on him, giving him glory, giving him honor. He's worthy. He's worthy. Amen. That's, that's the deal. It don't care how you feel like it. Have you ever, you, know, you are mind, you are body, you are soul, and you are spirit. The problem is you're out of alignment. Sometimes I tell you about going to a chiropractor. I don't have time about him telling me I was out of alignment. The spirit man should rule the sower's man to control the flesh. But our flesh controls our spirit man and our sower's man. The spirit man, I will enter to his courts. It's an act of will. Not how you feel. Have you ever been to church and I don't feel like praising? I don't feel like singing. I don't feel like lifting my hand. I don't feel like having anything. I don't feel I just don't feel like it. And all of a sudden the people around you start singing and praising. And then you sing and you get with it. And before long you say, I feel better. Your feelings is the soul, is the emotion. It's down here. The spirit man should rule how you feel. It will rule how your body. Any doctor will tell you that your mind will affect. I'm out in the parking lot, and here comes this bear. My heart beats fast. My blood pressure goes up. The adrenaline band begins to pump. I run up a tree. Larry takes his mask off. <laughs> and he says, Brother Ralph, come down. It's just me. I'm playing a joke on you. Was I in real danger? No. Was I in... <clears throat> was it a real bear? No. My, my heart actually beat fast. It really did. My blood pressure really went up. Why? I thought it was a bear. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Don't you understand that that feeling controlled my heart? It controlled my legs. But the, if the spirit man is in control of the sower's man, he'll be in control of the physical. Now, I will sing, for the Lord is good. He is good all the time. His love endures forever, and his faithfulness is to all generations. The Bible says that there is coming a better Moses. There's going to be somebody greater than Moses. 
There's going to be a deliverer who's going to come that's going to be greater than Moses. As Moses brought them out of bondage, this greater Moses, this greater deliverer, Hebrews says, Jesus will bring you out of sin. But the first Moses says, don't forget. Is the day communion? Where's the stuff? Do we have stuff? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, everybody got stuff for me? No stuff. No stuff Moses said, don't forget. The greater Moses said, don't forget. But he didn't have to deal with these cups. <laughs> really. I don't think Jesus, I, I think Jesus, maybe Jesus wouldn't have been so thankful if he had to try to figure out how to get this piece of bread out of here. And by the way, I think this is left over fish. You see, we can have something. I, I hope we, we don't count it as you. No, I got this. I can get it. Oh, no, no, no. It's already broke, Jesus. I don't have to break. <laughs> but this is what Jesus said. Seriously. Who was the greater Moses? Uh, he is saying, Lucas, take, eat, this is my body. Don't forget that it wasn't your neighbor, it wasn't the preacher that brought you out. Rhonda, he said, I want you to do this because I know, like the first Moses, you'll have to forget. And he said, I, I, I want you to remember this. I, I want you to do it all. And I want you to remember it was me, not the deacon, not the place you work for. It wasn't your girlfriend. It wasn't your wife. It was me. And I want you to remember me. That my body was broken. I was beaten. My stripes. I want you to remember. I don't want you to ever to forget. So I want you to take and I want you to eat this. And this is my body. And now I'm in you and you're in me. And you abide in me and I abide in you. And Jesus in John said, Father, love them just the way you love me. Now, I can't wrap my mind around that, people. Jesus said, Father, love Ralph Brandon as much as you love me. I can't, uh, Jean, I can't, I, I just, I can't fathom it. I, I can't, but I know it's true because it's in the Bible. That's what it said. See, that, that will break you. That, that will humble us. And he said, I want you to remember that this is my blood. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. If it wasn't for this, you would die and go straight to hell. I don't want you ever to forget that it was my blood, not your bank account. It was my blood, not your last name. It was my blood. It, it, it was this is what redeemed you. This is what purchased you. And you're covered in my blood. So when God sees you, he doesn't see you. He sees, sees you covered in my blood. Don't ever forget that. And I want you to do it. And I want you to know because you'll forget, just like the first Moses had to tell those people, by our nature, we'll, we'll just forget. But if you do this and keep it in front of you, I want you to remember me. This is 
the blood of the new deal, of the new covenant. The old covenant was, is what you did for God. The new covenant is, is what God did for you. And the word Eucharist, a fancy word for the Lord's Supper, means thank you. Means thank you. And so girls, I, if you could just give me a little grace to come back and help us sing, because I want you to try to do it Tuesday night. Would you help us close by just saying thank you, Lord, for saving my soul? Do we know that little chorus? And then you can sing whatever song you've got playing. But it all boils down to Thursday. I, I want you more than anything else. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so full and free. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. It was you that brought me out of Egypt. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Thank you, Lord. And, and I apologize to the ladies for not giving them a notice, and so maybe we'll just... I, I wish I could sing. I know you do too, but... I, <laughs> yeah, Chuck can say. to him. and be happy and let the world know what the joy unspeakable and full of glory Peter says thank you you're yes, dismissed oh, no, you got a song yes, that's actually called give thanks what? give thanks let's, let's get up let's get up and give thanks thank you Lord thank you